Hello, Travis with Heggy here. This video will cover the IAGLEADER ISO Direct Command system. Starting from the home screen, I'm going to tap on the UT or Universal Terminal icon here to bring me into my ISO bus screens. And here I have the ISO Direct Command system set up. This is the main page, or the one that I get to by tapping on the running man on the right hand side for the ISO Direct Command system. As you can see, I have a, in the top left, I have pounds per gallon. This is my product density. So right now I uh, believe I'm set up to apply 32%. So this is the product density for that product. Just to the right of that, I have my target rate. Target rate one is set at 10 gallons per acre. Below that, I have my speed in miles per hour, as well as my actual applied rate in gallons per acre. In the larger box below that, I have pressure, um, as well as my tank volume, and telling me which sections are on and off, and then the agitate, aux, and pump speed indicators, as well as my selected tip. To make changes to any of these, I can select them. Um, for this example, what I'm actually going to select is the double-ended wrench on the right-hand side here. This brings me into my settings page. Under settings, I have a couple of different options. Manage components was where I can set up different profiles within the ISO Direct Command system, as well as edit or add nozzles to the system. And then I have control valve settings, where I can make adjustments to my solution pump controls and control valves, alarm settings, and then system settings. I'm going to go into manage components here. Right now, I have a configuration set up. This is a wide drop configuration. I have nine sections. My width is 100 feet. And I have 80 nozzles with 15 inch spacing. Tapping on that configuration will list any other configurations I also have within this display or this uh, setup. To create a new profile, I would tap on the green plus on the left hand side. To edit the current profile that's selected, I would tap on the keyboard icon and to delete it, I would hit the red minus. Down at the bottom, I have another tab called Nozzles. If I select that, it's going to bring me into my nozzle selection. Um, I'm actually going to go through and set up a nozzle here. This is probably more common than making an entire configuration. So we'll go through and create a nozzle here. So to create that nozzle, I'm going to hit that green plus on the left-hand side here. First off, it's going to ask me to select a, select a nozzle creation method. So I can select all my parameters and manually. I can select an ISO nozzle or I can select a previously created nozzle. For this example, I'm gonna select an ISO nozzle. So I'm gonna tap on that and then hit my arrow to the right hand side here down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna select an ISO nozzle. In this case, I'm going to be creating um, an ISO 05 nozzle. So I'll select that and then hit my arrow to the right. The top three boxes on this page, name, reference pressure, and reference flow, you'll see have a little red star next to them. By selecting that ISO nozzle, the system has automatically input that information. So it gives me my, my name, it gives me the reference pressure of 40 PSI, and a reference flow at half a gallon a minute. That's what an ISO 05 nozzle means, is at 40 PSI, I'll put out half, half a gallon a minute. Um, if I were to have selected an 04, at 40 PSI, I would have put out 0.4 gallons per minute. Here I can also select a minimum and a maximum pressure. So if I never want my system to go below 20 PSI, I can select that here. And then if I never want my system to go above uh, 80 PSI, I can also input that there. It'll sound an alarm when I reach that pressure and um, let me know that I'm, I'm going too fast. Um, I need to slow down if I want to keep within this pressure range. Again, hit my arrow to the right down at the bottom here. Oops, looks like I already have an ISO 05 nozzle created. Um, we're just going to make this an 05 and then enter over. Next one I have here is all of my droplet size. So if I were to look at my, my tip chart, uh, my tip book, I would be able to enter in droplet sizes for my specific ISO 05 nozzle depending on what type of nozzle it is. I enter in those various pressures, and then I will actually get a gauge on my run screen that tells me what droplet size I am doing during application. I don't have that information uh, right in front of me right now, so we're just going to leave it blank. I don't have to put this in, but it is nice to have. Hit that arrow to the right down at the bottom. We'll proceed. 
Um, now I've got color choices. It will automatically select the proper color for this nozzle. Um, however, I can change that color if I want it to be something different. Um, I'm just going to leave it alone here and hit my green check. And now I have my 05 nozzle created. Now, when I went into my run screen, um, loaded my event, I would be able to select this 05 nozzle so that I had the proper pressure settings and reference pressures for the application that I'm doing. Again, we were in the double-sided wrench on the right-hand side. If I select that again, I'll get back to that settings page. We'll go into control valve settings now. Here we can see my PWM frequency. PWM frequency on Hagi machine should be 122 for STS. PWM gain, um, normally we see gains between about 350 and about 425. So I'll set my gain at 375 here. Max duty cycle, I'm going to leave at 100. By PWM standby, I'm actually going to increase from 40 here um, to about 50. PWM standby is the percentage of the pump um, that the system is going to hold with all the sections off. So that's as I'm turning around on my headlands. This is where my pump's going to sit for, uh, to keep my standby pressure so that when I re-enter my application pass, I'm not starting from zero pressure. I'm starting off at wherever this sets me that I can get to uh, get to rate a little bit quicker. Hit my double-ended wrench on the right-hand side again. Next one I have here is alarm settings. Um, my rate not responding threshold and my timeout. 30% in five seconds are the defaults. Generally, we don't stray from those too much. On the right-hand side, the next icon down here I have is a gear. If I tap on the gear, this is where I can calibrate different things. Um, this is where I calibrate my pressure sensor as well as my flow meter. If I were to tap on my pressure sensor calibration here, this is where I can go in, select what pressure sensor I'm running. I'll turn my main one on to voltage here. because It's a voltage pressure sensor. Um, then I have different options as far as the calibration method, multiple set points or single set point. You can do either one. Multiple set points uh, is normally a very good one to start with. So I'll set multiple set points, hit my arrow over. What it's telling me now is to uh, put my boom to zero pressure. So basically open my master spray, get zero pressure out there on the boom, and then hit record set point. That's going to set my zero point. And then I'll go over to my next page, and here I'll adjust my pressure up. So I want to manually increase my pump pressure. I'm looking at my pressure gauge out there on the boom, my analog pressure gauge. I'll be able to see where my pressure is. So... If, let's just say, for example, I increase that pressure to 80 PSI. I can then tap on this box here where it says 100 PSI. I'll type in 80. We want to be very accurate when we do this. And then I'll hit record set point. What that does is, so now I've got a zero reading and a reading at 80. And it knows, okay, between this, it took me so many millivolts to determine this. Now I need to set my pressure readings according to that. So when I hit my arrow to the right, I'll get a calibration number. My calibration number should be very close to 16 millivolts per PSI. Um, I don't have a pressure sensor tied into the system, so mine will read zero. Uh, but yours should be very close to 15 or 16. I apologize. Um, if it's a little off from that, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly normal. Um, but it should be pretty close to that 16 number. Hit my green check. Then I have flow sensor. Um, flow sensor calibration method. I have a couple of calibration methods here. I can do a catch test, I can do a static or field dispense volume test, or I can do a manual calibration. Generally, I do a manual calibration. Um, when I go here, I just enter a calibration number. Note that this number is in pulses per gallon. Um, all of the air egg flow meters on newer Hagi machines will be 378 pulses per gallon. Um, so I'll just enter that value, arrow over, it'll ask me to confirm. I hit my green check, and now that number or that value has been set. Pump, spence, pump sensor, below that, um, Hagi does not have a pump sensor tied into their solution pump, so I won't go through that calibration process. Back to my icons here on the right-hand side, the last one I have is a heartbeat. Um, this is where I can get into module diagnostics as well as entering unlocks for the ISO direct command system. We won't get into these in this video, um, but just to know that they are there. If I tap back on my running man icon at the top there, I get back to that home page, back to my main menu. Thanks for watching this overview of the Egg Leader ISO Direct Command System. If you have any other topics or, or videos that you'd like to suggest, please leave them in the comments.